Uh, hi, this is Henning and Morden uh, from flipnormals.com. In this tutorial, we're going to go through how to be make appealing and beautiful eyes in Photoshop. Yeah, not 3D. Yeah, not 3D. Uh, you can use 3D to get a basis for your eyes, but this is going to be totally a Photoshop hack on top. And like this, this is, I mean, this is such a time saver, especially when you're just doing 2D illustrations, you're doing a quick concept sculpt through Photoshop, literally like five minutes, and then you've got really nice looking eyes. Yeah, and uh, eyes can really make a difference. So um, this is some, um, some pictures, some speed sculpts, with just this technique applied to it. The eyes look all right. They're fairly, fairly quick, but they still look, they still look kind of nice. Mm. The character has more soul, soul in it because of it. Yeah. It definitely like, I mean, and because the eyes are such a, like an important thing of a character, the character that just helps you to draw, draw you in. It's like, if you do it render wise, you know, in 3d, it's so hard to get like just the correct highlights and just yeah. the exact color that you want. I you mean, you can some crazy light linking all yeah. kinds of stuff, like masks just for the eyes and it can be a nightmare. And this, I guess, also works if you're just doing a 2D painting. Mm. Uh, so let's just get to start with this. This is this is Bob, um, and Bob needs nice eyes. Your friendly neighborhood turtle. Yep. So this is the way it looks from 3D, and it looks it looks alright. It's kind of you know it's kind of like it kind of looks like he's got glass eyes right yeah. now because they're just there's no soul. They just look kind of dead. Yeah. But it's a great basis to yeah. sort of start off. Of. Yeah, if you if we want to here, we definitely could have like pushed the eyes more in three D. But as this is a still image, there's really no point in it. Yeah, because this is this is so much faster to do. So there are a couple of things here which is nice to get in three D. Um, let's make a new layer. So a couple of things is just the overall circle. You just have a round base to start with. Um, you have the color, the underlying color, and you have the pupil inside, and just the overall shape of the eye as well. So this is this is a nice a nice basis, but it's far from uh, far from this, which yeah. just looks way more appealing. Yeah, there's a lot more depth to that. Yeah. So there are a couple of things we're gonna go through here. This is very simple to do. Um, so if we just identify this first, uh, the um, the over whites of the eye here is um, it's been cleaned up. So it's cleaner. <laughs> It kind of look his, looks like his face was less like pushed into some mud before. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and um, then there is just around the iris here. There is like a dark, like a dark circle here, which just helps to frame it. Yeah, it's like creates a nice contrast to the to the white of the eyeball. Yeah, uh, and one side of the eye, like around half half this. Let's get a nice little red here to show. Around this is in uh, in shadow. And this is a highlight. This just makes make it makes it look more appealing. And um, then we have just some highlights here, and another highlight here, just to just to break it up, just to make it more visually interesting. Mm. We're having some color var variation. So uh, let's just go through how to actually paint this. So I said new layer, and um, we just start with a fairly default brush in Photoshop. Hold down the Alt key to sample the color and just paint over it. We just want a clean, nice base for the iris here. And oftentimes, I mean, you can't even, you're never really gonna be this up close. I mean, you, you know, you might sometimes, but for most illustrations where it's a full body thing or even a bust, you can really get away with some actually kind of loose strokes. Yeah. It doesn't need to be perfect. Exactly. So just painting in the blue here, uh, just so we have a clean base. And then some some blacks for the the people. Make sure though it's not completely black. You you want to avoid as a general rule to avoid um completely black and completely white. Yeah, uh, and especially also for the that's one thing I see a lot with eyeballs is that people assume that like the eyeball is white, but they assume it's like completely white. Yeah, like a hundred percent. Yeah, it's more sort of like oftentimes this. it looks more beige. Yeah, totally. Dimmed down because it picks up a lot of light from the environment as well. Yeah. And yeah, nothing is pure white. It just makes it look really unnatural and unappealing. So at this point, um, we have we have an iris here. It's it's alright. It's, it's now a constant color. 
and we have a defined pupil. So the uh, next step is to, uh, just for just for iris at least, is to add like a circle around it. You can use this. You can use the marquee tools for this, or you can just um, paint paint it in. We're just going to paint it in here. Uh, you can see I, I'm we're using the um, color wheel in Photoshop, which I prefer. Uh, and Morgan kind of hates, yeah, but it's uh, terrible. But that's just <laughs> personal preference. <laughs> it's not right or wrong. It's just for me this works. Yeah, and I mean it's it's it's. You know, objectively, it's it's a nice feature that you can quickly, you know, get <laughs> yeah. it up, pick a color. Yeah. So, yeah. But subjectively, it might not fit in workflow. But the way you access it is uh, Alt, Shift, Right Mouse button, and now you can just access it here. It's really nice. If you don't see it, uh, hold on Control, Alt, and K, and you get up the um, the preferences, and under just General and HUD color picker, you just set it to Hue Wheel instead of Hue Strip. Um, and this is fairly nice. You can just switch around the hue all the time and change the values. So just go here and now we just make a darker value and just quickly paint in. Yeah, this is not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna show, it's gonna be good enough for this example. I think it's beautiful. Thank you. Some of the best work you've ever done. <laughs> that means a lot to me. <laughs> All right, so our, it's an all right circle. It looks it looks fine. Yeah, Da Vinci would be proud. <laughs> Probably would. <laughs> Probably would. Uh, next step is to make one of the areas darker. The reason it's darker is because this is fairly basics. Uh, it's in shadow. The, um, the highlight hits here. So this area here, the light is going to go here and hit the eye here. Yeah, and this is all due to, you know, the way the eye works because like the inside of the eye is actually concave, so it goes in. And, you know, if you have light from the top, the top part will be in shadow and the bottom part will be in light. Yeah. So Just basically this fairly straightforward. The light hits here, makes a little nice highlight. Uh this part here is going to be in shadow and this part here is going to be in light. Yep. So fairly basic stuff. I mean, unless you have a light that just shines directly on the eye, yeah. and then in that case, the entire eye will just be lit evenly. Yeah. So the way we just do this is... Just that's usually never sort of like... That's always like flash photography and stuff. Yeah. And that's kind of creepy. You want to be a bit careful with that. So just um, just eye pick the color or color pick the color, uh, or just make a darker value and just brush it in. Ta-da! And we have one side now, which is darker. Already a lot more depth. Yeah, exactly. Compare this to this. It still looks nicer. Already looks nicer. And then one one area needs to be in um, in, in light as well. It already looks looks brighter just because one part is in shadow. Uh, but we need to just m make it brighter. Mm. And uh, just hold down Alt Shift Right Mouse button, and then we can just paint it in after you have selected a brighter value. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> I think one of the keys to this is also like, um, I mean, it, it, it definitely helps to just have a basic understanding of some sort of color theory. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's not like advanced color theory or anything, but just the way you play around with the saturation. and Yeah. Basically, when something gets darker, it goes darker and more saturated. And when it gets brighter, it goes brighter and less saturated. This is a general rule. Uh, so in the darks, you can just add some more saturation just to... Yeah, just add some, you know, for blue eyes, you could add some deeper blues. Yeah. Uh, so, so far it looks, it looks better. But we need a highlight here as well. Just um, select pure white for this. As, as I said before, you want to avoid pure white in general, except for something like highlights. Because the highlight here is just a light source which is being reflected, mm. which contains a lot of energy, so it's probably going to be close to white, at least if the, if the light is white. So just paint it in here, and the highlight, uh, the size of a highlight can also um, change the appeal of the character. If you want like a really like nice and cute character, you can add like a big one, or even two. 
Or super cute. Or three? <laughs> really super cute. <laughs> yeah, you go more towards like anime and stuff here. And one really, this is just kind of like a neat trick. I mean, it does happen in nature, but it's more like an art directed feature of sort of reflections of eyes. Um, you cross the the highlight that you get. Um, you you sort of cross it uh, on the pupil and the iris, so it touches both. Yeah. This just sort of like brings here. the eye closer. Um, it can look creepy sometimes, actually, if it's too far removed. So, and because you're painting it, I mean, you can pretty much do whatever you want with it. Yeah. You can even have it on a separate layer and just move it around as well. And um, Next up is just adding some more saturation to this. This isn't necessarily realistic, but it just yeah, this is ki this kind of goes against you know what we actually talked about <laughs> yeah. in terms of color theory. But this is the great thing because you know it. Yeah. You know how to like break it. Yep. So now you can just uh, color pick it and just add more saturation and brightness to it, which goes yeah, as Morton said, goes <laughs> completely against what we just said. But it actually like especially for eyes, it just adds some more intensity to them. Yeah. And knowing how to paint also also helps there. There's no denying that. Uh, you need basic painting skills for this. You need a Wacom, probably. I guess I guess you could do it with a mouse. You could. It would be hard. Like, I've seen people paint with trackpads. And yeah. That's that's, that's pretty impressive. hardcore. So, almost there now. And next up is just a final touch here of, like, a different color. You don't need this. This looks all right the way it is. I mean, compared to the right eye to the left eye so far, it looks miles better yeah it's very glass yeah. eye the other one yeah because it is yeah CG, it's in, in moto we're rendered from it it is just glass so just adding like a complementary color to this um can just be nice so just making this something like orange and just make it more intensely orange can just look nice doesn't have to be massive but just something to just mm. To just give it some coloration and just some more depth to it. This is also to sort of like you can suggest a reflection with that, or yeah. you know it could be from your from your light setup. Maybe you have like a three point light setup with a complementary color to one side. Yeah. Uh, also, you can also play the, with like the mood of the piece as well. If something is orange, that kind of indicates that there is some more danger to it. Well, blue is maybe more serene and calm, mm. cold. And next up. The eye is pretty much done now. So next up is this new layer, and just clean this up because it just looks really messy. Yeah. So same as before, just hold on the old key, select the color, and just clean it up. Um, maybe paint in some more, some more of the highlight again, and we're almost there. Just some more cleanup. Paint in some. Um, some occlusion around the eyes here, just to define a border. Yeah, I mean, you could even have a, like an like an AO pass for this, yeah. but it's such a minor thing, so. Yeah, and the good thing about keeping the eye clean up on a different layer is that you can now just take the, the pupil uh, or iris and just duplicate it. Hold down uh, uh, the shift and alt key and just drag it and you can duplicate it. And mm, suddenly, ta-da, we now have two eyes. <laughs> So this is a couple of minutes of worth of painting. Yeah. And you can just already tell how much better it looks. It just feels more lifelike. Yeah. So this is something which takes you no time at all. And I mean, you can adjust in terms of like, you can adjust the highlights, the intensity of the saturation to sort of dial up the realism. Yeah. Um, you know, remove some of the saturation, play around, tweak the highlight to make it more realistic if you wanted to, add more highlights, even more saturation. A bigger pupil um, yeah. for a more you know stylized look. Yeah, here in saturation control U in Photoshop, uh, it's just great for playing around as well. So yeah, yeah that's uh, that's it. That's Hope. how you make appealing eyes in how you Photoshop. Make... Yep. See you around. Yeah. See you guys.